when you're ready. Alright, you're off. everyone we are en route <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna do like 10 sneezes in a row or is that it we're en route to Sardelon and it is a lovely <laughs> summer's morning <laughs> there's probably a lot of dust on that blanket <laughs> this could take a while <laughs> Sabdalon and as you can see there's um, a bit of a swell situation taking place that's quite uh, we've got quite a lumpy sea state but we have no wind which is annoying one of those situations where you've got all the disadvantages of, um, of wind like the, the the waves the swell but none of the advantages but nonetheless it's a lovely morning and uh, we've made you know we got up a little bit earlier than we had planned and we're off and out a bit early. We're making five and a half knots, so that's um, that's good. We definitely want to get in before, I think we said before one. As you can see, by about one o'clock, we end up with northwesterlies. They start off quite light and they increase in strength throughout the afternoon. Obviously, we're going largely in a northwest direction, so when the northwesterly winds start to come through, then that's going to be a bit of a problem for us. So we really want to get to Sardalon before that happens. The high water is at 11 minutes past seven. I mean, if we left at, say, seven o'clock or maybe even six o'clock, then it's 32 mile passage to Sardalon. And going at about five knots, we would get there by hopefully by one o'clock in the afternoon, which is the point at which the northwesterly winds start to fill in. So that is our challenge for tomorrow, to get to Sardalon before those northwesterly winds become too problematic for us. We won't get any We won't get on, no? Why do you say that? It's, what time is it? It's seven? I think we're, we're, I think we're carrying a lot of tide and I think we'll lose it. Mm, nah. So how many hoodies do you have on at the moment? Two hoodies. I'm double bagging myself. It's cold, yeah. It's cold. It's, it's, it's Atlantic sea air. But now I'm just, I feel like a lizard on a rock. So I'm slowly coming to. And then we've got the sails up. Give us a little bit of a push. And hopefully we've got our uh, tidal calculations right. Um, we should, as we get around the tip of Hill de Ray, Pick up, uh, pick up the tide. So I'm hoping we've got about an average of five and a half knots, and I'm hoping that we can get six and a half knots out of this boat this morning. are 11 miles from Sardalone and uh, 
The weather's become quite pleasant. The sun's come out. We've still got quite a bit of cloud. At least the sun is shining on us now and it's a little bit warmer. Twirl has settled down a little bit. We've got a tiny, tiny breeze. We're just trying to catch what we can with the main. But uh, it's only a few knots, I think. Um, we were hoping to pick up some tyres, some favourable tyres, but I'm not sure that's actually happened. We're only doing about four and a half, five knots. But nonetheless, we are a couple of hours away from our destination. And the weather's lovely and we're enjoying our little motor sail. That's a one hoodie. Yeah, They're that's... Warm anyway. That's true. Well, this is quite lovely. Managed to get a little sailing breeze. Engine's turned off. That's a really nice uh, sensation. We're only about eight miles away, so we're not gonna be able to enjoy this for long, but we'll certainly enjoy it while we can. Very short pontoons. We're going to be reversing in. Yeah. 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 You're about to come into the main Yeah. Well, we need to shift this line. Oh, God, this bed is a bit small for us. Can you give me um, another stern line? There's another stern line just up there. I've never had one of these before. Oh, I'm quite excited. What? Just get, yeah, you and yours. You won't like it. I'll save, I'll save yours for me for later. So we saw this little um, cafe in the square and we couldn't resist. So we're going to um, have a little coffee. It's pretty, isn't it? The thing about this place is that like you come into the port obviously from the sea but the view from the water isn't particularly charming there's a lot of atmosphere once you kind of get to the back streets and to the seaside actually there's just a lot of people around isn't there it's very yeah, popular I, like it. I wonder if i can have my um, pastry no you cannot have your pastry i really want my pastry you're not getting your pastry that's rude the guy's looking at me. Yeah, well, he's looking at you and he's like, you know, madame, you cannot have your pastry here. Hey? Okay. Eh? I bet I could. No, you cannot. You... This is France. 
Teresa, there's also some fig wood etiquette. If you want to go over there, go over there by your bike and eat your pastries. I'm going to step to the corner to eat my pastry. <laughs> Such a breath of fresh air after all this COVID malarkey. It just feels very normal here. I've said this probably for the last, I don't know, two weeks. It's part of the fact you've got to wear masks in while you're inside. Everything's almost back to normal. The, you know, bars are open, restaurants are open. We had our first meal in a restaurant last night. And it just feels so good to be sailing again. Um, yeah, Ruby Rose zipping along yesterday. I'm kind of keen to get the boat dried out so I can actually get uh, the hull scraped. And that should add half a knot to a knot of speed. So yeah, all good really. I go and buy Teresa birthday present. And, uh, after 11 years, I'll let her choose what she wants. So do you remember that time that I fell off the boat and my sunglasses, my favorite sunglasses went flying off my head, broke and then fell into the water? Well, I've been wearing just like the spares on the boat and they're okay, but they're not quite up to scratch. And I just went and bought myself some new sunglasses. For your birthday? For my birthday, which is two days away, but Nick's letting me wear them now. Very generous. <laughs> Sardalan is not just a beach resort, it's still very much a working fishing port, a major centre for pleasure yachts, as well as home to boat builders such as Privilege and Lagoon. This mix of holiday makers, sailing yachts, fishing trawlers and industry creates a wonderfully vibrant atmosphere. The sprawling marina is located down a canal so it's perfectly protected from the weather, which is lucky because we were port bound here for over a week. Teresa's getting dressed, she told me I wasn't allowed to film that. It is a horrible, horrible day. The wind is blowing absolutely crazy out there. It's like 35 knots. We knew this was coming, so we tucked ourselves up in La Sabdalon. La Sabdalon, La Sabdalon. Anyway, uh, it's Teresa's birthday, and that means that Princess Teresa gets whatever she wants today within reason. The weather's so bad actually that we uh, we normally go out for a meal for celebrate birthdays, but it's kind of like we may not even be able to get off the boat. Are you prepared? Is she here? Um, you want to say happy birthday? I'm, I'm camera ready. You want to say happy birthday to the birthday girl? I'm the birthday girl. Well, people need to say happy birthday to you. Yeah. The silhouette situation. You're in silhouette. Try it again. There we go. There's the birthday girl. You want to say happy birthday to the birthday girl? We'll, we'll give you a moment. I'm sure that you're all sitting at home singing happy birthday to your screen anyway, right now. That's the, the, that's the kettle. Yes, the kettle. We don't have side plates. You also threw away the birthday candles. Have a guess. You have get to guess where I bought your birthday candles. Hey? I have absolutely no idea. Bermuda. Yeah, well, that would make sense. Yeah? Yeah, because we're saying that last year my birthday was in Carcassonne and it was raining then. And um, this year... Two years ago your birthday was in... Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic. <laughs> Three years ago it was in Charleston. It didn't rain then. No, it didn't. And then... But last year, it rained. Well, I wasn't really into that too much. Boys had good years, so maybe the fact that it's raining is, um, you know, kind of it uh, is important of an excellent year to come. Exactly. 2020's been brilliant so far, but... <laughs> <laughs> Joyeux anniversaire. That's it. Oh, that looks good. How good is that look? bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time Are you ready for the, the big reveal? Yes. It's clear to see I it was just cardboard inside or a balloon. <laughs> From so up here The world seems small We can sit it's Yeah, it's cold. It's so beautiful. You and me. There is something intrinsically nice about being stuck in a warm boat on a, on a rainy day, though. Yeah, it's 
noise that's Nick's computer that's been sitting there closed for like half an hour anyway I'm talking quietly because Nick is having his afternoon nap which he does every single day but I wanted to share something very exciting with you Waterproof doesn't like that. Blue sky. There's blue sky outside. It stopped raining. There's blue sky, and I have the weather radar on my laptop right here. And check out the weather radar. Pretty happy about this. I reckon that might be it for the rain for today. How exciting. The forecast was that it was going to rain, torrential rain, like all day. So the fact that I've got blue sky out there and the radar says that that band of rain has passed through. I'm very excited about that. I think that as soon as Nick gets up, we are going to go out for a little walk. get angry with me for waking you up <laughs> <laughs> I think that people need an explanation for the extremely French vibe you're going for you do realize that the stripey you have double stripey you do double denim <laughs> <laughs> the weather has cleared up enough for us to go out for a walk which I'm quite surprised about cockpit's a bit damp but not too bad This is very exciting. I did not expect to be able to go out on my birthday today. So I'm even more pleased than I ordinarily would be. I think we're just gonna go for a little walk um, into town. Gonna have a little look around, soak in the atmosphere. Check it out. Hello. I won't be losing you today, will I? Maybe you, should, maybe you will. <laughs> we're going to a French fishing port. Oh, that's like, true. Where's Wally? <laughs> Back in 2014, we came to Saint Delone again to oh, get out of a weather system. <clears throat> and I remember like being absolutely going stir crazy. We had five weeks off from work and after five days, the weather passed through and we bolted out of the, uh, out of the marina. Now the marina is about probably half a kilometer, 500 meters from the entrance to the sea. And it was the last time I was seasick which is not bad six years ago, but as you head down, and we'll show you, we'll show you how the sea state changes. And the pro tip here that we've learned the hard way is the weather system comes through, when it's passed, you wait 24 hours more before you leave port, unless you've got a cast iron guts. <laughs> I think that this um, town is an excellent example um, as to why the French, although they are amazing and world renowned at so many things, um, post-war architecture is not one of those things. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting because, you know, this beach is just stunningly beautiful. This, it, this is called Sable de which means golden sand and you, sands. Yeah, golden sands, plural and um, the beach itself is just ridiculously gorgeous and as soon as you get one street back from the beach the town itself is really really charming um, just absolutely lovely uh, but yeah the uh, the high rises along the beach don't do any favors that's for sure bit of a shame oh well
So, 27 miles to Ildia. Let's do this. 15 knots on the beam is like champagne sailing. Good times. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a bumpy ride. Nick's not feeling amazing. He's been looking a bit green. <sighs> oh, man, I hate seasickness. 